Thank you very much and welcome. My name is Patrick Jensen and we are the Birmingham Concert Band and we are here for our final concert of the season here at uh, Lutheran Church of the Redeemer, which we'll take a break over the summer and we'll come back in the fall, but we kind of see this as sort of the end of our official concert season and kicking off into the, into the summer. But we're glad everybody was able to join us today. I'm, I was worried when I was driving here today. It's always, it's always one or the other, right? If it's, if it's bad weather, I'm worried that people aren't going to come out because of slippery roads. If it's good weather, I'm worried that everybody's going to be enjoying the sun too much. And I'm glad you guys are able to rip yourselves apart from the beautiful summer we have out there to come, come and enjoy some music here today. We actually have some really fun stuff planned today, some pretty special things. First off, we have our student concerto, our, our student uh, scholarship winners coming up on the second half of the concert, so we'll, we'll uh, be presenting those. We're very proud to present um, some uh, local uh, young talent here in the area. And then, our sec secondly, we have a really wonderful program of uh, music centered around folk songs. Now, what is a folk song? Now, there's a lot of, it's kind of a nebulous word, and there's a lot of different definitions, depending on how academic the person you're asking is. But a folk song is sort of a, a song or a piece of music indicative to a certain culture. And I, th I think you, you kind of have to go a little beyond that, because I think a lot of folk music is catchy, and it's simple, and it's the kind of music that, even if you don't write music or, or know how to read music, you can kind of get it in your head and you can sing it. A lot of folk music was used to pass stories from generations to generations. So very catchy, simple, you know, cultural type music. And what you're going to be hopefully fascinated by, like I am, by the music today, is that each composer that we're presenting here today takes a very simple folk song, but then twists it and turns it and puts it into, kind of makes it into a new, new animal, if you will, by the end. And we get a lot of different interpretations of what a folk song can really sound like um, here tonight. So we started off with uh, Valdrez, which is actually of Norwegian origin, which is cool for me because I'm of Norwegian origin. That's pretty fun. Uh, but um, uh, it's a song written by a man who uh, uh, considered, or it was considered a complete failure when he wrote it. He wrote it for his uh, military kind of brigade. Uh, nobody liked it. He, he claims that only two people clapped after the performance, his mother and his brother. That was it. <laughs> that was it. But he, he was tenacious. He kept up with it. And eventually, it's become one of the most renowned marches in the entire world for any for any country and certainly over in Norway so really really a success story it just took a while for that one um, we're gonna move on though with um, uh, with a tune of American origin swing low sweet chariot uh, which I guarantee you, all, all of you have heard this tune at some, some, some point or another. What you might not realize is that it has some interesting history. Um, it has uh, uh, origins with uh, uh, African-American spirituals. A lot of the slaves would use it for entertainment or even for communication. And there's actually a kind of a, th a working theory that although the lyrics, you know, if you read them one way, it, they play on a lot of Christian themes about redemption and all that. But on the other hand, a lot of people think that the lyrics may have been coded language for people following the Underground Railroad and kind of hidden messages to help people along the way that wouldn't get them in trouble or get them caught, you know, in that sort of way. So it has some really interesting origins. And the, and the version we're going to play here today by Stephen Rouse um, is pretty reminiscent of another band composer you're going to hear later tonight, Frank Tekeli, one of my favorite composers. And we played a lot of his works over the last couple of concerts. You know, just like Tekeli, you'll hear these, these wonderful colors and textures in the orchestra. It has a very dreamlike quality. And, and I think the connections are pretty obvious, because not only did Stephen Rouse actually study with Frank Tekeli shortly, uh, but he actually wrote this or published this through Frank Tekeli's publishing uh, company, Manhattan Beach. So all these connections are there. A little preview to what we'll hear from Cajun folk songs a little later on. But hopefully you enjoy Swing Low, Sweet Cherry.
that because we're playing a really heavy piece for you for the final tune here before we give you a little break. A tune called Lincolnshire Posey. And if I put a poll out of people in the band world, conductors, composers, those types, academics, so I put a poll out of what's your top five favorite pieces of concert band music, I think almost every single person I'd ask that question to would put Lincolnshire Posey in the top five. It's considered to be a seminal work for band, a work that sort of transcends what concert band music really is or usually is, where it's usually kind of military music and marches and stuff. This is trying to go beyond that and trying to create real art with the concert band ensemble, which per Percy Granger is always very well known for that. In terms of our folk song uh, theme, this this tune fits perfectly into the, into the theme because it's based, each movement, which we're going to do five of the six movements, are based on folk songs from the Lincolnshire area in England, which if you can imagine England in your mind right now, if you know where London is, kind of towards the southern part of the, 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 the island, if you go just north and to the west, or to the east, or sorry, to the east a little bit, north and to the east on the coast, sort of, um, if you know where Nottingham is, where not, like the Nottingham Forest and Robin Hood, it's kind of around the same area. But Gr Granger actually went to that area himself, took the rudimentary recording equipment that was available to him of the day, which it's very far removed from the cell phones that we now carry in our pockets. He had like a wax cylinder type setup going out there, and he'd go into the into the in, in, into the woods and into the hermits and find find these backwoods type people and have them sing their family folk songs to him. And he collected um, something like four dozen of these songs, and then he took the ones that he liked the best and adapted adapted them for band. Um, what's neat is that he. He wanted to preserve the rhythmic intent or integrity of a lot of the music. So unlike other people like Stephen Rouse, you just heard right there, who kind of twists the melody around and kind of creates his own ideas, Ranger wanted to stay very strict to how the actual recordings were sung. And so you get these weird time signature moments of like five eights and seven eights and weird things because he's trying to kind of you know, they're not like singing to a metronome on these recordings, so he's trying to kind of emulate those tempos shifting and those time signatures going around, and in the, in the process, he creates this, this brilliant uh, composition. So hopefully you enjoy This is one that I've been, I've been uh, kind of promoting over the year and getting you guys to come into this concert. Um, it's one that uh, I've been bragging to my band director friends about that our ensemble's doing it here tonight. It's pretty darn special that the, the Birmingham Concert Band is able to do Lincolnshire Pose. I hope you guys really, really enjoy it. So we'll play this, like I said, five movements, and then we'll take a short intermission and we'll come back with a second half of music for you. I hope you enjoy.
Welcome back. We're the Birmingham Concert Band. We got a whole another half of music for you with our folk song theme. And I think the folk song was pretty obvious where the origins were for that one. The Blue Bells of Scotland from, of course, Scotland. And uh, what's neat about that one for me is I, I love that it's uh, the arranger there, the composer, um, technically arranger, is Leroy Anderson, which I bet you guys know that name because you usually hear it around Christmas time with Sleigh Ride, right? Well, the one we usually play around Christmas time. If, if you don't know about Leroy Anderson, he has he has a whole catalog of music that's not Sleigh Ride, that's not Christmas music, and I, I'd really encourage you to go check it out. He's got some wonderful tunes that I'll, I'll, I'll sprinkle them in every once in a while with this group. Uh, but we're going to move on uh, with a tune, again, of American origin, uh, with American Patrol, which is another tune I bet a lot of you are familiar, of, uh, familiar with. If you've heard it before, I bet you've heard the Glenn Miller version, which was really popular during the World War II years. It was one of the biggest pop hits of that time period. Very jazzy, upbeat number. But it was originally a concert march written more than 50 years before Glenn Miller was around. Um, and the, the term patrol is actually a song format or a, a, a form, a form for composition. You, maybe you've heard a term like, uh, like a, a rondo form before, sonata form, something like that. You, hear, you read those in, in programs at like orchestra hall and stuff like that. Well, it's, it's a way to sort of structure a piece of music and then you can put different themes and, and melodies over the top of it, but you kind of start with that structure. Well, at the time that this was written, way back in the 1800s, the patrol theme was something you heard in every country. And they all are basically the same and they, they kind of they kind of have this like, marching band parade sort of story that goes along with it you'll always hear a drum intro done very very softly almost like the bands in the distance down the road and then you'll hear the melody very soft and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and then the parade is right in front of you and the band is playing loud you'll hear a big drum roll there's a big moment and then just like the beginning it starts the parade is going on so it starts fading and fading and fading and eventually they're off into the distance this one has a little cap in the end to to, to <laughs> to you know, kind of tap your toes right with a little more rambunctious ending, but you'll basically get the gist of the, the parade coming and going. So nice familiar melody, and you'll hear some other familiar American folk melodies kind of sprinkled in throughout. Hope you enjoy.
Thank you very much. So now I'm going to pass the mic off to Stephanie for our concerto, or our, yeah, I keep saying concerto, our scholarship winners. Here we go. Stephanie from the clarinet section. Please welcome her to the microphone. Okay. Um, at this time, if all three of our scholarship winners could come join me up here, please, and thank you. No pressure, you guys. It's fine. <laughs> So as Pat just said, my name is Stephanie Karizny. I'm the chair of the scholarship committee. Before I tell you about these three really amazing individuals here this afternoon, I wanted to first um, recognize the efforts of the rest of our scholarship committee, and I'm gonna give you a little bit about the history of our scholarship program. So first of all, if you guys could all wave, um, Jamie Fugit, Melanie Hutchings, Tim Kennedy in the back there, are the rest of my scholarship committee, they all three of them put a lot of time and effort into making this program come together this year. So if you guys could all give them a round of applause too. Um, one of the central tenets of the Birmingham Concert Band's mission as an organization is to foster music and the musical arts by education and by charitable means. And the primary way that we've done this over the years is through our student scholarship program, which provides deserving local music students with the financial support to pursue advanced musical education. So generally, these students are using their scholarships to pursue private lessons or to go to summer music camp like Blue Lake or Interlochen. Um, over the years, the Birmingham Concert Band has awarded well over $100,000, um, and this year's winners are part of a long tradition of musical excellence. This year we offered scholarships in three categories. We had our Bob Sack Honorary Scholarship, which was for students uh, up to grade eight, our Dave Falvey Honorary Scholarship for students in grades nine and 10, and then our Grant Hemke Honorary Scholarship for students in grades 11 and 12. Um, all of these students here had to write us an essay telling us why they felt they should receive an award, and they had to send us a letter of recommendation from their band director or their private teacher. And then additionally, our high school students had to send us a brief audition video. Um, we're gonna be making awards in all three categories this year. You see these three guys right here. Um, and it's my pleasure to tell you a little bit more about our winners. Um, first up is Liliana Reset. She's receiving the 2024 Bob Sack Honorary Award. Liliana is in eighth grade at Summit Academy. She plays the flute. Even though she's in eighth grade, she plays in the high school marching and symphonic bands. She's also in her middle school jazz band. And this year she got a one at solo and ensemble and she played a solo. So here's Liliana, please give her a round of applause. And then on the end here, we have our 2024 Dave Falvey Honorary Scholarship winner, Mr. Bradley Coggins. Bradley's in 10th grade at Holly High School. He plays percussion. There's not a lot that Bradley doesn't do. Um, he's in the Flint Youth Symphony Orchestra, the Flint Youth Wind Ensemble. 
He's been a member of the Michigan All-State Ensemble two years running. He was the first chair Masterworks timpanist at Blue Lake. And he sent us a really exceptional audition video. This young man played us four different pieces on three different instruments. So please give Bradley a round of applause. And then finally, we have our 2024 Grant Hemke Honorary Scholarship winner, Talia Reddy, here in the middle. She's a senior at Bloomfield Hills High School. She plays the clarinet. Um, she's another incredible musician with a laundry list of musical accomplishments. She's a member of her high school symphony band and orchestra. She was the marching band drum major. She's also a two-time member of the Michigan All-State Ensemble. She was concert master and principal clarinetist in the Detroit Symphony Orchestra Youth Wind Ensemble. She regularly volunteers performing healing music at the Henry Ford for cancer patients. And she's going to Penn State in the fall. She's going to minor in clarinet performance. And she's planning on going to med school and becoming a doctor and incorporating music into her future medical practice. So everybody, please give Talia a round of applause. want more information about our scholarship program or if you'd like to receive our scholarship packet which is um, released every January we have a sign up outside at our table um, leave me your email address and your name and we will get that to you and one more round of applause for all these guys please selections for you. Um, two suites of music. So the first one's going to have two movements, the next one's going to have uh, three after that. Uh, but the first one we'll do is Cajun Folk Songs, so, which is by Frank Tichelli, that composer that I was uh, teasing a little bit earlier when I was talking about Stephen Rouse. Uh, we played several of Tichelli's uh, tunes over the last couple concerts. It's been kind of a year of Tichelli. I think we'll take a break after this. But the reason I fe feature him so much is I just love his music so much. And he has so, so, much, so much color and variety and art to the world of concert band music that oftentimes is la lacking in these compositions. Um, this one is obviously drawing from Cajun culture, which is the French kind of subculture of New Orleans, which is a wonderful, you know, New Orleans, the city is just amazing, and the Cajun culture is kind of like a, a microcosm of, of New Orleans uh, kind of culture, the mixing pot of everything kind of coming together. And although French is maybe the predominant um, influence on this, there's all kinds of different cultures mixing in as well. You get some Hispanic kind of influences, some African influences. Um, it's a wonderful mixing pot of different cultures coming together. And Frank Kelly wanted to use this piece as a tribute to some of the great music, kind of forgotten music that's coming out of, out of Cajun culture. And this time we get two movements. The first is a slow movement, the second is a fast movement. Um, they both have bell in the title, but they have maybe not the happiest themes if you look at the lyrics and the stories. The first song is a story about uh, the lyrics describe a woman who is being approached by a military man who's trying to um, romantically be involved with her and she's not so keen about it. So she actually feigns, she fakes her death in order to get out of this ro romantic uh, uh, coupling. Uh, a little, little, little intense, maybe. Uh, but the, the other one, the second movement, um, a little more bleak, if you will, a man who travels to Texas because of work, and by the time he gets back, his lover is ill, and she ends up passing away, and um, kind of in her final moments, he's standing by her bed. And I don't know how Kelly did this, but he turned that very sad, very bleak story into a very upbeat, danceable uh, tune that almost sounds like America. If you know America by, by um, uh, Bernstein, and this one you're going to hear one beat less. And it just has this wonderful snappy rhythm to it. I hope you enjoy it.
We have one more tune for you, and as always, I'd like to get out some thank yous before we, before we press on. First off, thank you to Lutheran Church of the Redeemer for hosting us for our concerts throughout the season. It's such a wonderful performing venue, isn't it? Um, and and they, they really accommodate us quite well. So thank you very much to the church for having us. Um, thank you for all our scholarship winners for coming here tonight and participating. It's great that you guys are here. Um, thanks for the scholarship committee. Thanks for everybody who sets up the stage, especially Mike Lipinski and everybody else who, who helps out setting up the stage, coming in early and the rehearsals and everything that, that we really couldn't do a lot of what we do without you guys helping out. So I really, really appreciate it. And I really want to thank you guys for coming out on such a beautiful day to our last concert here at the church until, until the fall. Um, we do have concerts coming up during the summer. And actually, our next performance is at White Chapel Cemetery for our annual, annual uh, Memorial Day performance, which is a, a really touching, uh, touching performance. Um, has a lot of gravitas to it, a lot of uh, wonderful, wonderful patriotic music and, and uh, honoring, honoring those who have fallen. Um, it's the day before Memorial Day, so the Sunday right before that at White Chapel Cemetery. If you want to hear some wonderful patriotic music, please join us for that. You can check out our website, BirminghamConcertBand.com. I think I got that right. BirminghamConcertBand.com. Go to the website for all the information about that. As always, I'd like to make a call from the podium here for, um, for additional musicians. If you're looking to have some fun playing music, if you want to see yourself or if you can see yourself performing with us uh, someday, you can. All you have to do is come to rehearsals, have some fun playing music, and if you, if you haven't played your instrument since high school, it's no big deal. We have all skill levels here. The goal of this ensemble is to have fun making music and share it with the community. So if you're, if you're wanting to come and perform with us, talk to some of us after the concerts. Uh, we, uh, we rehearse on Wednesdays, and we have concerts throughout, throughout, the, uh, throughout the season. So thank you once again. Hopefully we'll see some of you at White Chapel Cemetery, and have a great day. Enjoy the sunshine outside. Our last, oh, sorry, our last performance, sorry, I almost didn't tell you. Our last song is the Greek Folk Song Suite. Um, we're going to have a slow, uh, a fast, slow, fast movement, and it really uh, ends with some uh, uh, toe-tapping fun. So hopefully you enjoy it. Once again, thank you very much for coming out. We're the Birmingham Concert Band. Thank you.